Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for the second episode in our tutorial series on oxygen not included. In today's episode we're going to build a compression system for liquids and gases. This is especially handy if you want to store a ton of liquid or gases in a very small area and even though in reality you cannot really compress liquids, it is possible in this game. This is the design right here, let's just go ahead and let it run. We are going to fill up this entire area with water before activating the mechanism in order to compress it into the lower area. The same thing happens with the gases, we are filling this up to 20 kilograms per tile before we activate the mechanism. This way we can save a little bit on power and only really use the mechanism when necessary. So if I just speed this a little bit up and we are gonna wait for the 15 kilograms mark. Actually that's where I set it to, not 20 kilograms. There we go, we are reaching 15 kilograms and you can see the hydrogen has been pushed down. This mechanism is going to be reactivated every now and then as long as we have over 15 kilograms. Now at the bottom you can see we already have around 10 kilograms of hydrogen in each of these tiles and with every compression it adds a little bit more. There we go, now we're already at 13 kilograms and that's just going to continue as long as we're pumping in more hydrogen. The same thing is going to happen very shortly for the liquid compression. As soon as this hydro sensor detects a little bit of liquid, the system is going to be activated. And that should happen in just a second. Yeah, there we go. Activate and we have the liquid drop down. Now in order to exemplify the capabilities of this, I'm going to add 2000 kilograms of hydrogen into this room. So now in each of these tiles we have a thousand times more gases than you could usually add with a normal gas vent. I'm gonna do the same thing with the upper floor and we're also gonna add a little bit more water. So now instead of pumping in the liquid we're just gonna drop a whole bunch of it and let the system activate over and over again until we are compressing the liquid. There we go, looking very good. Take a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now water wasn't really meant to be compressed so in each tile there's gonna be a different amount but we can already see for instance right here we have 2800 kilograms, 3000, there is 7000 kilograms in the upper tile and 19000 kilograms in the right tile right there. In terms of gases we are already at 2900 kilograms so a thousand kilograms more than I cheated in. And as you can see, it's just gonna keep on compressing. So why don't we go ahead and start building this contraption together. We want to start with an area of about six tiles and we're gonna do the liquid compression first. Now, I would imagine eventually your base is gonna be so big that you might want two entries for the liquid since you're pumping more than 10 kilograms per second and you just need that. We are then going to add mechanized airlocks, uh, leave two tiles free and then add three of those airlocks. Now you need to be careful if you build this in survival. You might not want to hook up the automation wires just yet so your duplicates can actually build everything. For the liquid compression we're gonna take a bunch of airflow tiles and I'm just gonna prepare the area. If you only want to have one pump in order to pump stuff out you can do it like so or you can expand it a little bit in order to pump out 20 kilograms per second and that's exactly what we're gonna do in that example. I can then go ahead and wall this off at least in my case otherwise you would probably want to leave a couple of spaces free in order to get in there. So to wrap this up we're gonna add two liquid pumps like so and we could for instance get it out in a manner such as this. On the top of course we're gonna have our input pipes. Okay now let's check out the logic. What we want to install is an XOR gate and I want this bad boy to be, let me see, probably right there. The XOR gate is only gonna send out a green signal if the inputs are different. So one of the inputs has to be on and the other one off, otherwise this is not gonna send a signal. If we have the same signal here, nothing is gonna be sent out. I want a signal switch for my first input and then I want the hydro sensor for my second input. So first input is gonna go right here, hydro sensor is gonna go right there. The next thing we're gonna need is a buffer gate. This will output a green signal if the input receives a green signal, however I can decide for how long this green signal is gonna be active. What we want is two buffer gates in front of the first two doors, then we want to leave one space free and add another buffer gate. 
we are then gonna fill up the gap with a filter gate which is keeping the signal and only continuing the signal after a certain time. So that's the difference between those two gates. What we want to achieve with this circuit is both of these doors should open up first, then the upper door should close, therefore trapping whatever liquid we have falling down. Then the lower door is gonna open and then the middle door is gonna close and the lower door is gonna close, therefore the liquid has been pushed down all the way. Let's go ahead and add the wires. As I mentioned, I want to enable both the first and the second door at the same time. So first and second door are going to be opened up for a certain amount of time. The first door, however, I want to open up for 1.5 seconds. And the second door I want to open up for 2.5 seconds. So it's going to be opened longer than the first door. We are then going to continue our signal not only to the second door but also to the filter gate. Therefore we are waiting a little bit before then activating the third buffer gate that obviously is going to go to the third door. Now how long do we want to wait for? We want to wait for exactly 2.7 seconds and then the last buffer gate can be simply one second for instance. Now these numbers I figured out after doing lots of testing. This gave me the most consistent results. If you find a better solution for the timings, of course post them in the comment section. So all of this logic is going to go through the mechanism one time and after that it's just going to stop. So we need to continue that with another buffer gate that I'm going to place right here. Yeah, that should be good. And we want to activate that buffer gate right after we initialize the mechanism. So with the opening of the first door, we're going to activate the buffer gate and it's going to go trying the same signal as the hydro sensor. This buffer gate is responsible for the interval of the mechanism. So if I set this to 10 seconds, for instance, every 10 seconds, the mechanism is going to be activated. You can also put this to a very large number if you want to save on power. But there we go, that's essentially it. What you want is the hydro sensor to send out a green signal and only send out a red signal if you want to enable the mechanism. So let's say if the current pressure is below one kilogram, then we want to send out a green signal. And that's when all the doors are closed and the mechanism is waiting for the hydro sensor. So now nothing is going to happen unless we fill this up and actually the hydro sensor detects the water. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of power to the mix. This all needs to be hooked up. Well, for some reason I didn't have my second door connected. Yeah, second buffer gate is connected to the second door, but also to the filter gate coming after it. So now what we should be seeing is uh, the water uh, falling down every 10 seconds. Of course, I have the game sped up a little bit. I'm not just going to go ahead and drop a little more liquid on here so we can see the system in action. There we go, another compression and it is pretty fast. It is uh, definitely faster than you can drop in the water. Now what I did is I just filled this up with mesh tiles, you know, for the looks. If for whatever reason you want to vent the system, this is where the signal switch comes in. If you shut off the signal switch, all of the doors are gonna permanently open. So if for any reason you need to do that, there you go. Alright, just for shicks and giggles, we're now gonna do the same exact thing for the gases. So three doors just like that and for the gases obviously you don't want to use the airflow tiles at least not next to the doors. Also going to take two gas pumps which can only actually fill up one entire pipe so maybe you even want to do four pumps for your compressed gases in order to be able to fill up two pipes if you need that much flow. But for us this is entirely going to suffice so that's how we're going to do it. Into the automation we go, there's going to be a switch, we want a Atmo sensor for the gases of course, there's going to be an XOR gate, we want two buffer gates, another one here, we want one filter gate facing this way, connect switch to XOR gate, connect Atmo sensor to XOR gate, XOR gate to buffer gate, the first two gates, wanna connect the first door, the second door, as well as the filter gate. Filter gate goes to buffer gate, buffer gate goes to the last door. And the first buffer gate also enables another buffer gate responsible for the timing or the interval that connects to the same line as the Atmo sensor. First buffer gate 1.5 seconds, second buffer gate 2.5 seconds. Then the filter gate is going to be 2.7 seconds and the last buffer gate 1 second. The interval buffer gate I'm going to set to 10 seconds. 
and then the Atmos sensor should by default send out a green signal. So let's send it to set a green signal if the pressure is below 15,000 grams or 15 kilograms. So now all we have to do is fill this up with a little bit of gas and the system should activate trying to push everything down. We started with 200 kilograms and we're already down to 150 kilograms. So the gases really work in a percentage because the more gases you have in the upper room, the more you'll be able to push the gas down. If it is really thin, only very few gases are going to be pushed down. But as you can see right here, we're already at 200 kilograms per tile and up there we are down to 59 kilograms. So to wrap this up, I'm just going to wait for the pressure to go all the way down in order to showcase you that eventually the system is going to stop. So just imagine we don't have any new hydrogen to add to this room. Eventually, of course, we want to save the power and not let the system run the entire time. There we go, we're already at 16,000 and we're below the 15 kilogram mark. Therefore, the system has come to a halt. And now, of course, as usual, you can just bring this out like so and fill up an entire pipe worth of hydrogen. Sweet, very nice. That's that for the compression system. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I sure hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day and hopefully I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.